Oh, there it is. Look at his back so far. 25 questions with Marquez Brownlee, MKBHD. And as we go down the list, we're gonna get more personal, more tricky, and more awkward. So, you good to go? I'm ready, sure. Okay, so 25. How much would someone have to pay you to use a BlackBerry phone as your day-to-day -day phone? <laughs> I wouldn't be very happy, probably. <laughs> yes. Fair enough. But, uh, you know, they made an Android Blackberry with a touch, I'm forgetting the name of it, with the flip out keyboard, front facing speakers. Mm. Is I know it, what you're It's not about, the yeah. Priv, but the one after that, I think. I think I could actually. Priv is a terrible name. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I could, I could make that you work without it. getting paid, okay. I think. Yeah. Windows Phone will come too. Um, <laughs> do you think YouTube Rewind is going to be worse or better this year? I think it has to get better. It can't get worse, I think, kind of thing. Yeah, it can't be any worse. I, I think, uh, well, they'll learn from their mistake, right? From the previous yeah. 2019. 2019 will be better. So you mentioned in your Pixel 4 video that the phone has a lot of shortcomings, just things that you kind of expect from other phones and are missing, like ultra-wide camera, lack of storage. Do you think that is an intentional move from Google because they're targeting a market that doesn't really care about that stuff? Or do you think it's just a misstep? Pixels have never had incredible hardware. Uh, if you think back to Pixel 2 and Pixel 3, you know, not the flashiest screen, not the most amazing design. Mm. They had great cameras, but we all saw right. what happened to the internals. We all saw what happened to the, the performance. So I think maybe our expectations were a bit high. But our expectations are set by price, and it's basically 999 if you want it, like a good amount of storage and battery, right? It's priced right alongside those top dogs. Yeah, they priced it too high. So related to the Pixel, as I was testing the Pixel 4, I did notice that Google has started to make the phone more aware. They've got radar, they've got better face scanning, and it kind of feels like they don't want you to touch your phone as much. Do you feel mm -hmm. like that is where phones are headed? Do you feel like after touch, voice is going to be the next thing, and then after that, maybe mind control? <laughs> well, I mean, it feels more convenient to not have to pick up the phone and hold it and use it. Um, so you're a fan of gestures? Uh, some of them, <laughs> yes. Yeah. And some of them, not so much. Like, I like the squeeze for assistant, actually. it's You're still mm. touching the phone, but it's more of just like a casual, like, squeeze it, ask it a question. You yeah. don't have to yell the, the key phrase or mm. whatever. So, you know, it's, it's a little more convenient that way, it feels mm. that. Yeah. Not so much this. Not, not as much of a yeah. fan of that, yeah. Okay. Quite a big question. So mm -hmm. if someone came to you, they were currently using a Nokia 3310, they were locked into no ecosystem at all, wow. and they asked you which phone to buy, what is your gut feeling? <laughs> I'm gonna guess that this is a person who doesn't have a whole lot of criteria yeah. in a phone because yeah. they just really make phone calls and maybe text. I'd have to ask them a couple questions probably. But if they just came from that phone and they want the best, I would probably hand them an iPhone 11 Pro. I'd say be careful with the ecosystem because there's a whole <laughs> bunch of other fences that you can build around yourself. But this phone will text great. It'll make calls great, but it'll do a whole bunch of other fun stuff. You heard it here. Yeah. So what is your favorite camera phone between iPhone, Samsung, Pixel? Right at this very moment, iPhone 11 is my favorite camera in a phone. Now we're saying this right at the beginning of me testing Pixel 4, which I think takes pictures that I like the style of a little bit more, mm. a little contrastier, a little bit more detail, but the video is sort of lacking. And, and so I think my default smartphone camera right now is the iPhone 11 Pro that mm. I carry. The easiest to get the best result kind of thing. Yeah, point and shoot. I don't go into manual controls that much at all, mm -hmm. so yeah. So foldable phones, we've talked about foldables a while ago, and do you think foldable phones are a destination? Are they like a form factor that's here to stay? Or do you think it's a stopgap between flat phones and flexible phones? Um, I think the foldable thing is here to stay. And if I was looking at the future, mm. you know, my crystal ball, I would say the whole idea of having a big screen whenever you want, but that you can fit in a small space like your pocket that you can fold up and, mm -hmm. and tuck away is like that idea is here to stay. I think that's the beginning that we're starting to see with foldable phones. So you think even four years onwards, foldables will still look something like the Galaxy Fold, just better? Yeah, I think so. So if you could pick one moment out of like your entire YouTube career, what would you say gave you the biggest rush? Oh, <laughs> wow. Uh, recency bias, but I would say when I first started doing these interviews, just the fact that anyone was willing to just spend the time and talk tech with no agenda, they're not promoing anything, yeah, they just want to yeah. hang out. I think interviewing Elon probably comes to yeah. mind. Because like, that was the first one. One of the first big ones where like, he was just like, yeah, let's just sit down and just talk. I've wow. had others since then where they're specifically doing a press tour. Like mm. That's something that happens when you do interviews. But yeah, just, just sitting down and casually chatting. Was, and he's a busy guy. He's a very busy man. 
so I'd say that. We talked about this earlier, Realme. You said you haven't heard of them, but what is your initial reaction to this phone that's just been announced, the X2 Pro? So it's got a 90 hertz display, Snapdragon 855 Plus, 64 right. megapixel camera, and China price is less than $400. Yeah, so there's this whole brand of phones I'm seeing come up actually, similar to this one, where you'll mm. see like, incredibly, a 90 hertz display, a Snapdragon 855 Plus, all these high-end specs, and a pretty decent looking design, and an incredibly low price. Yeah. And I'm, I'm loving that hardware competition. I want to get more of these phones in my hands because it's sort of like the Pocophone area where like the specs don't tell the whole story and you yeah. actually have to use it to get to know what it does well and doesn't. But And there weren't many weaknesses on the Poco. Do you, do you agree? Right. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Solid the phone. camera turned out a bit better than I expected. <laughs> yeah. Like when I see $400, I'm like, camera's going to be bad. Um, yeah. But it turned out okay. So yeah, I want to use more of these phones and figure that stuff out. Okay, real me. Hit them up. Yeah. yeah. So the more I'm starting to talk to people about phones, the more I'm starting to get the impression that the tech community is this a little bit of a bubble, and the actual main factors of people buying phones are not which one has the best camera and which one has the best display, but more about which one is going to give people less hassle. Do you agree with that, or do you think that something else is maybe the most important thing? I've tried to do more of these uh, real-world tests with mm. people, and I, I sometimes just hand a phone to someone and just say, what do you think? And uh, obviously they can't get the full usage experience, but typically what I found is cameras do matter a lot to people. They just mm -hmm. want it to take good pictures instantly and not have to think about it. Uh, and they want it to be fast. And most of the rest of it is just, are my apps gonna be fine? So it's ease. So the, yeah, the ease of use, and it kind of turns into an ecosystem thing when you bring mm. up apps, because then if your other ecosystem doesn't have those apps, then that's what right. you end up talking about. But it turns into ecosystem and camera. Do you actually use wireless charging? I do. You do? I have a Pixel stand on my desk, I have a Pixel stand at, next to my bed, and anytime I can, especially with this phone, I will okay. wireless charge. And it yeah. make, you do think it makes your life easier? It does. It, de it really depends on the phone, because some phones, especially lately, will have these gigantic batteries where I, like, I use the phone differently. Like, I mm. don't charge most of the day, and then like I'll just plug in at night and be fine. Right. Yeah. But then there's these other phones with like super fast charging, so mm. I'll use those differently. I'll like plug in in the car, I'll plug in five minutes at my desk, five mm. minutes at home, and then I'm just always at like a high state of charge. So it just depends on the phone, but okay. with wireless, it's definitely easier. And if you had to guess, how many phones do you think you have in this studio? Ooh, wow. Um, smartphones. smartphones. How many smartphones do I have in this room? Mm -hmm. I would say it is a three-digit number less than 200 over 100. Yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, it's you, way you too many. <laughs> <laughs> what do you plan to do with them? Uh, no, I don't have any plans for any of them. I mean, we just get phones yeah. here, so they just sort of just accumulate. So it's not like I'm planning on hoarding more phones, <laughs> but they, they sort of end up here. It happens, yeah. Yeah, I just bought a Pixel 4 and a Pixel 4 XL, so there's more on the way. And like, what would you say is the best collab you've ever done, apart from this one? <laughs> the best like YouTube collab? Yeah. That's a really... Good question. Because I've done collabs on other channels and collabs right, yeah, on yeah, my yeah. own channel. You've done like Casey's tour, you've done all those other things. Yeah, oh man. Recency bias again, but I'm gonna go with actually, so it's Truth or Dab, where Sean Evans, awesome host, mm. hosts a YouTube chicken wing show, but also does this <laughs> Truth or Dab spinoff, had Casey and I on, and of course his questions are super well researched, and the whole ecosystem of that show is just fascinating, so yeah. I'm gonna go with that actually. Okay. 90 hertz displays, you yeah. talk about them quite a lot, you really like them. Love them. You love them. Is that a sweet spot? Like, do you think actually we benefit from going to 120 hertz? Yeah, I've I've played with that a little bit in my head. I think it is kind of a sweet spot. Mm. I definitely noticed the difference between 60 and 90. And then I've played with the ROG Phone 2 at 120. And I felt like I sometimes noticed the difference. But again, your power draw is going to be one and a half times right. again. So I think, yeah, 90 seems 90 like is. a sweet spot. But also underrated is the touch response mm. frequency. So you have 120 hertz touch response on an iPhone that makes that 60 feel smoother than a Samsung Note 10 60. So yeah, you have to get a number of factors right, but I think 90 hertz refresh rate is a good mm. middle ground. Have you ever taken a different angle shot in one of your videos just to flex your shoes? Yes. <laughs> yes, I have. And that's something I can say I've done this year. We just did that with um, the Apple Watch video. Is that what you're referencing? Uh, maybe. <laughs> I think that's the most dramatic version I've ever done. Yeah, I have at least at least that one time done a alternate angle just to flex a little bit. <laughs> so Marquez, are you planning on being part of the Team Trees campaign? I am. 
Yeah. I'm actually already a part of it. I know that I won't be in town, unfortunately, on the day that it all drops, mm. which is going to be phenomenal, but I do plan on participating. Cool. And for those of you guys who don't know what that is, essentially, we're trying to do our bit. We realize like YouTube is this massive responsibility and we can make a massive change. So it's basically the biggest YouTube collab ever, organized by Mr. Beast, Mark Rober, and we're going to try and plant trees, 20 million trees. With enough money raised, it's a dollar a tree. If they can raise 20 yeah. million bucks, they can plant effectively 20 million trees and make the biggest difference possible in the name of YouTube creators mm. making a positive impact on the world. It would be insane. So yeah. I will leave a link below for that. Yeah, so to what extent do you script your videos? Because like on one hand, like they do come across like you're just having a conversation, but they Mission always have a structure. Right? <laughs> yeah, I would say 90 plus percent of, of what I say is scripted. The challenge is information density. Like mm. there's a lot of things that I want to say in as short of amount yeah. of time as possible. So I'm trying to structure it in a way that sort of flows from point to point. So I would say, yeah, it's a good 90 percent. So I remember you saying that you don't really watch much TV. Right. You don't really play many video games. So between Frisbee and flying to meet celebrities, <laughs> what do you do in your spare time? Eat, sleep, play a little NBA 2K, and dream about the next video. <laughs> That's mainly Good answer, it. good yeah. answer. Okay, so so right now I've got a couple of uh, true and false questions here. Okay. It's sure. not, a, not a test, no pressure, they're pretty wacky. It's a so. test. <laughs> Okay, so three questions. So the first one is, Apple displays the time on iPhones in mm. promotional materials as 9.41 a.m. on purpose. That's true. It's on purpose, and I'm trying to remember why it's 9.41. Is it because 9.41? Is that just because the hands are all like evenly spread out? Uh, or? No, they do something like that for the Apple Watches, right. but it's separate for the iPhone. It's to do with when the first iPhone was announced. It was like 40 minutes into the presentation, uh, okay. and they wanted the time to line up with the actual time in oh. the world. Okay, so Huawei has a rotating chairman system, so every few months they change the deputy chairman. I don't think I've ever seen that in a company before, but that doesn't mean Huawei doesn't do it. I'm gonna go false. That one's true. That one's true. But you really? did say you could believe it, so fair enough. The third one is that <laughs> Samsung already has a patent for a flying car. For a flying car. <sighs> <laughs> I could also believe this because Samsung <laughs> makes everything. They make washers and dryers and refrigerators and let's go with true. That one's false. No, oh, man, <laughs> yeah, Samsung, way, yeah. come on. <laughs> four questions left. And number four is, would you rather lose one million subscribers or would you rather have to use a Windows phone as the only phone for the next five years? Five years? Five years. Oh, that's easy. I'd rather million. lose a million subscribers. Yeah. <laughs> if you look in the YouTube analytics, you can mm. see how many subscribers you've already lost right. versus gained. And I have already lost more than a million subscribers oh. total in the lifetime of the channel. It hurts to say that out loud, but <laughs> That's it's That's crazy. And on the subject of subscribers, who's going to hit 10 million first? You or Linus? <laughs> or Linus. <laughs> it's going to be real close, man. I think we've got an edge on him right now, but you know, he's always got his tricks. And so we'll have to see, but let's go Team MKBHD to 10 yeah. mil first. Okay, so number two, mm -hmm. how many of Sony's past flagships can you name? Wow, not enough. <laughs> not so enough. Sony Xperia 1 is the last one I used. And then I have to go back another like two years. And they are horrible with naming. That's the thing, yeah. Horrible. Uh, <laughs> XV? I'm gonna just stop there because yeah. I'm gonna just start naming it's things bad. that don't exist. So the uh, the K. Yeah. The middle name, right? You're yeah. revealing it at 10 million. <laughs> so if I were to like go onto Google now yeah. and type in your name, it in would theory. say it's Keith. Is there a possibility it's not? Are we gonna have to wait and see? Yeah, you're gonna have to wait and see. So okay. there is a, there's a fun fact that you can't edit your own Wikipedia page. <laughs> so every time someone one edits my Wikipedia page, it becomes a thing like, oh, that's got to be what it is. Oh. And I can't change it or correct it. And if you do this enough times, Wikipedia will lock it for vandalism at whatever the latest change is. Because people just keep editing it. I can't correct it. So you'll just have to wait till right, and This is a plot twist. Yeah. Oh, man. Okay, I thought I had you. Yeah, so there you have it. There we go. That's a wrap. Thanks a lot for having this me. This has been fun. This Thank has been you really for the, fun. Yeah. The Twenty-five questions. <laughs> the the tour has been amazing. I wish I could have shown you guys some more of it, but the studio is incredible. And as you know, he's moving soon. I'll drop a channel link if you don't already know. But you know who doesn't? And yeah, catch you in the next one. Exciting times. Peace.